Hello, Yarnabees. Okay, so we are at the beginning of our collab, uh, Christmas Cardigan Collab. Now, this video is completely optional. You do not have to do this in order to make the sweater for the collab, but it is an option. And you don't even have to do this one. You can pick any kind of um, an applique that you want. Um, you can do uh, snowflake. You can do, depending if you even are doing a Christmas sweater, if you're not, then you can do like a sun and moon. You can do, like I did this one uh, for another sweater, right? So you could do something like that, right? Like it doesn't have to be a Christmas sweater. But in this case, this is going to be the square that I use for my Christmas collab with Jennifer at Cinnamon Stitches. Okay, so here it is. Little fuzzy Christmas tree. Okay. All right. Now, don't let this intimidate you. It takes a little bit of... The, the Christmas tree itself takes a little bit of patience if you've never done a loop stitch before. But um, it's not totally hard, you know, uh, once you get the concept down. This is two pieces. So we're going to be doing the square first. And then we're going to be doing the Christmas tree. All right, so let's get started. All right, first off, I'm going to be using a four millimeter hook. I am going to be using the Heartland um, yarn in the color Kings Canyon. Because as you will see in my other videos, this is the color that I'm going to be using in the tutorial. And then I'm using the Loops and Thread Soft Classic. And this color is off-white. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so we're going to do magic loop, all right? But if you don't want to do magic loop, then all you have to do is a chain four. And then, um, well, here, I'll show you a couple. Hang on, I'll bring you in a little bit. Whoops, that's a little bit much. Okay, so you can, oh no, wrong, slip knot, chain four, put your hook into the very first chain to make a loop, I'm going to slip stitch, chain up three, and then you're going to be working into that, that loop and starting to make your clusters. All right, so you can do it that way, or you can do a chain two, and then in that very first stitch right there, you can start doing your clusters inside of that. All right, so you can do it one of three ways, but for the purposes of what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing a magic loop, which is, people do them differently. Um, I just wrap it around once, put my hook in underneath, grab my working yarn, pull it through, go and grab my working yarn, pull it through, and there you have your loop. Okay? Okay. So, hang on, I'm going to bring you down just a little bit. Okay. So here's my magic loop. I'm gonna chain three. All right, yeah, yarn over, go into that loop, and you're gonna make two more double crochets. Okay, that's your first cluster. Going to chain two. You're gonna yarn over. You're going to do three more double crochets. Okay, chain two. 
That's our two clusters right there. Yarn over, do three more double crochet in that loop. Chain two, go back in and do another three double crochet, or uh, yeah, another three double crochet. Chain two, and then you're going to slip stitch to your first chain in your first cluster. Okay. And then you're going to take your tail and you're going to pull. All right. And there you've got your first part of your square. All right. Now you're going to slip stitch into that next um, double crochet and then you're going to slip stitch into this chain space. That puts you into the first corner. All right. Okay. Now we're going to chain up two. Sorry, chain up three. Go back into that corner and you're going to do one double crochet. Now, normally on a um, granny square, you would do three and then chain two and then three more. I'm only going to do two because I found with this square, there was, it seemed like there was just too many stitches in these center, into these um, sides and it just started to buckle like crazy. So I wanted to, cause I don't like blocking anything. <laughs> So I'm going to do it this way so that there isn't any um, buckling. So you've got your first two double crochets there. You're going to chain two. And you're going to do two more double crochets in the square. I'm sorry, Bailey's just being obnoxious today. Okay, now, whoops. This is not like your typical granny square. I'm going to bring you in a little bit. All right, you're going to go into this space right here and you're going to do a double crochet. Yarn over, then you're going to go into this next space right here. Do a double crochet. Yarn over, then you're going to go into your corner. Okay. You're going to do your two double crochets into the same corner, corner space, chain space, chain two, then go back in again and do two more. Okay. Now you're going to go into that first, that chain, um, double crochet right there. Do a double crochet. Next one right here, double crochet. Go into your corner space right here, and you're going to do two double crochets, chain two, and then go back into that corner space again, do two double crochets. into your next cluster into that space double crochet go into that next space double crochet then go into your corner two double crochet chain two go back into that space Two double crochet. Okay, and then we're going to do our last one. Yarn over, go into that space right there, and do your double crochet. Now, this one's a little bit tricky because this is where you did your slip stitches to get into the corner. So, if you look real carefully right here, there's, there's the 
double crochet here, right here is there's a space. So you're going to go into that space and do your double crochet. Okay. Then you're going to go to the top of this chain right here and slip stitch. Okay. Then go into your corner space and slip stitch. Okay. Now you're back to the beginning. All right. So that's the beginning or the second layer of your, your square. Okay. Now you can pull your, if you want to, you can pull your, your um, tail here and you can weave in your end right now so that it doesn't get into your way. Everybody hates weaving in ends so I like to do it right away so that you don't have to worry about it later. So you just weave it in and pull and get it right out of your way. Okay, because this is going on a sweater, I like to go back this way on a stitch and then go into the loop, make a knot, because when you wash it and everything, I just don't want it to come apart. And then you can just weave it, oops, weave it in and then cut it off. And I don't have any scissors here. Okay. All right. So there, that's done. Now we can move on. Okay. All right. So here we go. Chain two. Nope. Sorry. Chain three. <laughs> okay. Go into the corner, do another double crochet. I think I have you in a little, oops, a little too tight. Okay, so you've got your two double crochet, chain two, go back in, double crochet, turn over, go back in, double crochet. So you've got your first corner done. Now you're going to go into this stitch. Now if you look, this stitch is normally the stitch that you would go into, but like I said, when you have too many of these in here, it buckles. So I'm skipping that one and going into this one. All right. So it's technically the top of the second um, um, stitch. Losing my words here. Okay, now you're going to go into the next one right here. Double crochet, and then go into the next one, double crochet, and the next one, double crochet, whoops, double crochet, and then the next one, double crochet. And then you should have uh, wait, the corner, if you're counting the, the corner piece, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On there but <clears throat> if you're not counting the corner this corner piece there should be five stitches in between okay yarn over go into the corner space do two double crochets chain two two double crochets Remember, skip this this one right here. Go into the second post and the top of the stitch, double crochet. Go into the next one, double crochet, and the next one, double crochet until you've got five across. Okay, and then you go into the corner, two double crochet chain two, two double crochet. Okay. <coughs> All right. Go into 
the next space. And then the next one, do five across. Five double crochets across. Okay. Now, I'm not counting the corner piece. You've got five stitches across. Yarn over, go into your last corner. Two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. Then you've got your last five. One, two, three. Then here's your your uh, slip stitches that went into this corner. So go into the next. Oops, into the next space there, and then go into the bottom of this chain. A little space right there so you're going to go into there for your last um, double crochet then you're going to go to the top of that chain and slip stitch okay there we go there's that that much and then we're going to go around again slip stitch into the corner Your chain three, double crochet, chain two, do your two more double crochets. Oops. So your chain, your chain up always counts as your first double crochet. I should have said that. <clears throat> okay, now you're gonna go into your skip this this one and go into this one. Do your double crochet, and then the next one, double crochet, all the way to the corner. So in this row, you should have eight double crochets in between your corners. Okay, so that's your corner. Don't you don't have to count that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you go into your corner, two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. Okay. Now I think you understand now what you're dealing with. So you're going to go all the way around and I will meet you at the end of the row. So this is what we've got so far. Now we're going to do one more row. I think it's one more row. Yeah. One more row and then we can get started on the actual tree. All right. So don't forget to slip stitch into the corner and then you chain three. Do a double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, go into your stitches and start your double crochet row. All the way to the end. It's six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Okay, so you're going to have eleven stitches in between your corners. So go into your corner, do your two double crochets, chain two, two double cro crochets. Then you begin again. You do that all the way to the corner, slip stitch, and then fasten off, and then your square is finished. And when you're done that, 
come back and we will start on the tree. All right, so now you're gonna get your green yarn and oops, you're gonna do a slip stitch. Bring you in a little bit, oh, wrong way. Okay. And you're gonna do a chain of 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12, oops. <laughs> Of course. 12, 13. All right. Now, oh, um, I'm going to bring out just a smidge more. Okay, now you're going to go into the second chain from the hook and you're going to do single crochets all the way down the chain. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, now this is where it gets fun and <clears throat> a little a little bit complicated. <laughs> um, <clears throat> don't stress about this, okay? You'll get it. You're going to chain one. You're going to turn your work. Okay, for those of you that when you crochet this finger, your index finger is the one that holds your tension, this is going to be really easy for you. I hold my tension with my middle finger so this was a little awkward for me to to do because i'm not used to using this finger up okay but for the most of you you probably use this finger anyway so this is going to be a breeze okay you're going to go into the same stitch that you chained up okay you're going to yarn over. Nope, sorry, no, you're not. You're going to go into that stitch. All right. Now, you're going to go around both of these. You're going to bring your, your hook around here. Grab this yarn here and pull it through. All right, then you're going to take your finger out, hold it down, and you're going to yarn. You're going to have three chains on your hook. You're going to pull through all three, and that's going to hold your loop in place. Okay, let's do that again. You're, it's going to take a few times to figure out how to do this if you've never done this before. Okay, here's your yarn. You're going to go into the chain or into the the single crochet stitch. You're going to yarn. You bring your yarn or your hook up and around, grabbing the other side of the yarn, and pull it through. Bring your finger out. Grab your working yarn and. Pull it through. Okay, I know this is, this concept is going to be a little difficult for some. All right. Okay, finger up. Okay, you don't have to have it way up here because you don't want your loops to be too big. Okay, so just bring your finger up, bring your hook, hook into the stitch. Oh, I'm having a hard time keeping it in frame. Put your finger, your finger, your hook <laughs> into the stitch. Bring your hook up and around your chain or your yarn. Grab your other yarn and pull it through. 
bring your finger out and pull your yarn through. Okay, so now this is what your hoops or your loops are going to look like when you're done. Now, if you're finding that your loops are too big, it means you have your finger up too wide, too high. But that's easy enough to fix. Okay, so if you've got your hook in, you go around, grab your yarn, and drop it, and, you're, and you find that your loop is way too big, then all you have to do is take your yarn and pull on it a little bit. And it will shorten up your loop. I'm going to bring you out a bit because I don't think that you guys can actually see what I'm doing because I keep going out of frame. Okay. So let's do that again. Finger up. Go into the next stitch. Bring your yarn or your hook around your yarn. Grab your other yarn. Pull it through. Drop your finger and grab your working yarn and finish the stitch. So it's basically like a half double crochet up here, but it leaves a loop. Okay. Here we go again. Go into your stitch. Bring your hook up and around your yarn, grab your other yarn, pull it through, you got three on the hook, drop your finger, bring it through. Okay. I'm trying to do this as slow as I can so that you can under you can get the grasp of it. It took me quite a while to figure it out be only because of my finger placement. But um, let's try it again. Put your hook into your next stitch. Hook up and around. Grab your yarn. Pull it through. Drop your finger. Finish the stitch. Okay. <clears throat> You're going to do this all the way to the end. Go in, grab your yarn, pull it through, drop your yarn or your hook, your loop, pull it through. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Go into your stitch, finger up. Hook around, grab your yarn, pull it through, drop your finger, finish the stitch. This is where it gets a bit difficult for me because I usually use these two fingers to hold my work. <clears throat> but now I'm using it for my tension, so trying to get used to using these two fingers instead is a bit hard. But put your hook in. Bring it around, grab your yarn, drop your finger, finish your stitch. Go into the stitch, grab, see I'm using the wrong finger again. <clears throat> Let's try this again. Oh, sorry about that, I had a coughing fit. <clears throat> Okay, so put your hook in your st in your stitch. Oh, good grief! Okay, this is where I'm going to be a little awkward because I got to use my other finger. <laughs> Bring it up and around. Grab your yarn. Pull it through. Drop your finger. Finish your stitch. Okay, now <clears throat> right here. Where are you? Right here, this is a stitch, okay, right at the very end. So you're going to put your hook in there. You're going to do it again. <clears throat> Pull it through and finish it off. Chain one. 
All right. So this is what you're going to have. All right. So that's the base of your Christmas tree. And it takes a bit of practice, but I know you can do this. If I can do this, you can do this. <laughs> <clears throat> okay if you find this a little too intimidating i understand just go do a um a different kind of square and we'll be good but if you want to keep doing this continue on and let's go all right this next one is going to be super duper easy <laughs> okay all you're going to do is um, a single crochet row but you're going to be doing decreases on the beginning and the end so in the first stitch, you're going to put your hook in, pull your yarn out, go into the next stitch, pull, put your hook in, pull your yarn out. You're going to have three on the hook, yarn over, pull through all three. So that's your de decrease. All right. <clears throat> and then you're just going to go and do single crochets. So one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. You've got two left at the end. I wonder if I can. <clears throat> Where the heck is my light here? Is that a bit better? Okay. So you've got two. Hook, uh, two stitches at the end you're going to do another decrease put your hook in pull your yarn out put your hook in to the next stitch pull your yarn out you're going to have three yarn over pull through all three chain one and turn all right now we're going to do the loop stitches again all right All right, so here we go. Put your hook into the stitch. Put your, your hook up and around. Grab your yarn, pull it through, pull your finger out, yarn over, pull through all three. Next stitch, put your hook in, hook around, grab your other yarn, pull it through, take your finger out, and finish the stitch. Okay, you're going to do this all the way to the end. Put your hook in, go around, pull through, drop your finger finish your stitch. Okay. This light is really bothering me. I don't feel like you guys are getting the <clears throat> full lighting. All right. Put your hook in. Put it around the back of this one. Pull your yarn through. Pull it through the loop, drop your finger, finish your stitch. Okay, we're going to do that all the way across. <clears throat> okay. Be a bit fiddly, but good okay. last one. And there you go. Okay, 
That's your second round of your... It looks like a carpet, like a shag carpet, eh? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> now we're going to chain one, turn our work. We're going to do a decrease. Put your hook in, pull your yarn up, go into the next stitch, put your hook in, <clears throat> pull your yarn up, yarn over, pull through all three. Then you're going to start your your single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Six will be your last. <clears throat> then you've got two at the end. You're going to put your hook in, pull your yarn up, Go into your next one, put your hook in, yarn up, yarn over, pull through all three. <clears throat> Excuse me, there's your decrease. Okay, now you're going to go back and you're going to, you're going to chain one, then you're going to go back and you're going to start doing your single crochets and your decreases. I'm so sorry, George is home now and he's watching TV, he tends to forget that I can hear everything and so can you because um, the living room's just around the corner now because I've changed my rooms. So <clears throat> I'll be right back. Okay, now we're going to do our next row of loops. Gonna put your hook in, go around, pull through, drop, finish off. Put your hook in, loop around, drop it, and finish your stitch. We're gonna do this all the way to the end. You're going to get a rhythm going after a while. Okay, last one. Put it in there. Okay, chain one. Turn your work, do your decrease stitch. Oops, what, what the heck happened there? Okay, then your single crochets, go one, two, three, and then your decrease okay chain one turn your work now you're gonna do your loops okay do your loop row One more. Okay, chain one. Okay, you see how it's it's going up like that. So okay. now you're gonna do your turn your 
I work you. I'm going to do decrease. And you're going to do two single crochet. And then your next decrease. Chain one. Now you're going to do one, two, three. You're going to do your four, four loops. Chain one. Okay, now <clears throat> you're going to do two decreases. Go in, pull up, go in, pull up, finish the stitch, then go into the next one, pull up, then you go into the next one, pull up, and decrease. Chain one and turn. Now you're only going to have two loop stitches to do. So go, boop, go in, grab your yarn, drop your finger, whoops, that's one, go in, grab your yarn, and that's two. Chain one. Now you're going to, you've only got the two stitches there, so you're going to do a decrease in and go in pull up and decrease and chain one turn now you're only going to do one loop stitch at the very top chain one and fast it off okay cut your yarn through and the tree part is finished or this part of it anyway <clears throat> okay all right so now you can go and you can um, sew in your ends just to get them out of the way and I forgot to tell you that you're going to need a color for the stump or the stalk. Um, um, what do you call it? The little branch that goes on the bottom. So a brown or, or something like that. Um, you don't need very much of it. You just You're, you're just doing a few stitches to do the... Um, the bottom part so if you have any scraps this is where brown scraps would come in real handy okay so let me grab my my brown scrap and we'll do that part all right so now what you're going to do is push you're going to look go to the bottom of your tree here Turn it over, push all of your little loops down, and you're going to count six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's the middle right there. You're going to grab your brown yarn, pull it through. Oops. And do a slip stitch there, just to get your yarn on. Just keep pushing this stuff down to get it out of your way. <clears throat> okay, you're going to yarn over and you're going to, no you're not, you're going to go do a, a single crochet in that same stitch that you just put your yarn in. Okay, 
So just do a single crochet there, go to the next stitch over, do a single crochet, chain one, turn your work. Go back into that same stitch that your chain is in, do a single crochet, go into the next stitch, do a single crochet, chain one, turn your work, go into the same stitch that your chain is in, single crochet, go into your next stitch, single crochet, and fasten off. And your little tree stump is done. Oh, dang it. I forgot to tell you, keep your, keep a length, if you want to, just keep a length of, um, of yarn for your brown, because you're going to want to stitch around, <clears throat> stitch around your stump to get it onto your, um, square. Okay, so here's your square. Now I like to try and find the middle here, somewhere around there, and use a couple of stitch markers to put the tree onto the square. Now I like to take the corner of the squared and put it just at the corner of one of your um, your corners on your square here. I'm going to figure out which. I think it's uh, the second row of the square. That's where I like to put the bottom. Just stretch it out as much as I can. Okay. <clears throat> and, uh, oops. Second row, and put the corner of the tree there. Okay, and then you can put the stump on the last row. Okay, yep, yeah, that'll work out. Okay, now all you're going to do is you're going to take your green yarn, you're going to cut a chunk off, make it long enough that it's going to be long enough for the to go around your tree. Then you're going to whip stitch or you know however you want to attach it. Um, oh, whoops. Okay, that didn't work very well. All right, I'm going to thread my needle. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the bottom. Bottom of my tree. Down here. And I'm just going to put my, attach my yarn to my tree. I'm just going to, you're not going to see too much because it's the same color. <clears throat> so I'm just going to put my needle through, oops, that loop and make it tight so that it's really on there. Tuck my ends underneath and then I can start stitching. So what I like to do is I just take, if you can see that, it's more like a surface crochet. You don't go all the way through. Um, and then you can just pull your yarn like 
that. And just grab a little bit of the white yarn and grab a bit of the tree and just go all the way around like that. And by not going all the way to the back of the um, the square, you won't be able to see where you stitched it. Okay, try and keep your branches out of the way so that you don't get caught. Your branches get caught in your loop stitch are in your stitches here. <clears throat> then I like to take the corner and really try and stretch it out a bit. So then you don't have a real floppy tree. And then you turn it, push all your things to the side here, get it in place. And then keep whip stitching. You're going to do that all the way around. <clears throat> and then, so you're going to go all the way around and then you're going to go across here. And when you get to the stump, I like to go across here where the stump is and then fasten off. And then you can pick up your brown yarn and you can go around your stump. Okay. And, uh, and then your tree is on. All right. I'll finish that and then I'll be right back. Okay, so your square is done. Um, you have the option, you can still block it if you want to. But, um, now, you're going to want to make um, three or four of these. Uh, you might want to make a few just plain ones without, without the tree. Because uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting these down the spine of your sweater. Okay, so I will explain to you um, how to do that in the other videos. But basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to measure from the base of your neck down to the length that you're going to be doing your sweater. Okay. And then you're going to figure out how big these are, like mine is uh, about four inches by four inches, or four and a half inches by four and a half inches. Okay, uh, so you're going to need to know how many inches from the base of your neck down to the length that you want your sweater. And then you're going to figure out how many of these squares you're going to be able to get in there. Now, I wouldn't do them all like this. Okay, break it up. All right, so um, you can do like one of these and then a plain one. And then one of these and a plain one or something like that. Or you might just want to do one in the middle and then do the rest in plain. Okay. Um, but like I said, it depends on the colors of the sweater that you're doing. Um, maybe you want pink trees. Maybe you want to have a black, um, a black square with a white tree. Um, you could do that. So the sky's the limit with this. You don't have to, like I said, you don't have to do a tree. You can do whatever you want or just omit the whole thing. Right. I'll, I'll show you when I start doing the sweater tutorial that you don't have to use these at all. You can use these as pockets even. Um, on, actually, that's a good idea. 
now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so make up a few of these. And if you make too many, eh, who cares? You can use them for something else. But I like the idea of the pockets. That's kind of cool. I might add these as pockets as well. Or maybe I'll do a snowflake one or something for the pockets. But anyway, um, yeah, do up a few of these. Do up some plain ones. And uh, join me on the next video when we get started on the sweater. Yay. <laughs> okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye.